Second, malicious intention, nuclear energy. You can read what Miyazaki says in the book Starting Point. Well, it was originally an interview of Animeju. Which was later included in Starting Point. In this interview, the interviewer asked him, There's the strange black building that stands in the middle of that peaceful landscape. What is that building? Miyazaki replied, It's really up to your interpretation, but you see a truck with a radiation warning symbol right afterwards, so you'll get an idea. Miyazaki knew that the black building was a nuclear power plant, and there had been an accident there, but he didn't say it. He was like, I'm not going to tell you guys any meiju. He had this in mind. If anyone sees that symbol and gets it, great. If not, who cares? Will Chaga and Asuka and the record company know? Nah. There had already been the Chernobyl disaster before On Your Mark was made. But it was way before Fukushima and a few years before the accident at Tokaimura, which was pretty serious. So most Japanese people back in the mid-90s weren't familiar with the radiation symbol, let alone the biohazard mark. Really, only a handful knew what they were. Miyazaki must have been upset that the Chernobyl disaster hadn't been thoroughly reported. That's why he believed he could draw the radiation symbol here and there in the movie, and people will still miss them. Well, he still put them as a message directed to his real enthusiastic fans, thinking, I'm sure you guys have done the research on what these symbols are. So, let me elaborate. First of all, what can I show you? Maybe the biggest board. So, the building is in the back, and you see the radiation symbol here. So, what is this building? It's pretty simple. It's the number four nuclear reactor of Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Number four reactor is where the accident occurred. It was later tightly covered by many uneven layers of concrete to stop radioactive leakage. It was then called the sarcophagus, which means stone coffin. It's a common name to those who were watching news back then, or anyone working in the nuclear power industry. Miyazaki took the image of the sarcophagus and made it look more baleful. He even obscured what it really was on the storyboard. This is the first scene. Here he wrote, A Strange Building. He was playing dumb by not clarifying what the building was. But he couldn't keep it to himself, so at the last scene, he wrote, In case nuclear power plant reactor. He must have gotten excited as he was finishing his storyboard, so that he couldn't keep it secret. If you imagine that, he's very cute. That's our Miyazaki. He can't hold himself when he's excited. Here, this is my favorite cut. You see the rotten barbed wire in the front? And we all know now that this is an encased nuclear power plant. What this barbed wire indicates is that at first the area beyond the wire was deemed dangerous, but eventually people found out the hazardous area was a lot wider. So the residents who live near the wired area also evacuated, so no one lives here anymore. That's why the wire is rotten. 
When the accident occurred, the neighborhood around the power plant was blocked. But that was not enough as the contamination continued. So they had to abandon the entire region, not just inside the wire. So everyone had to evacuate within a radius of several kilometers. The wire became meaningless since now no one lives here. So it's rotten. There's a scene that suggests the aftermath. Chaga and Asuka drink in a melancholic mood. It says here, synthetic salted mackerel and vinegared bio octopus, real dried sardine and grilled chicken. It means there are only humans in this world, or... So, the synthetic mackerels and bio-octopuses are both fabricated. There's something called selective propagation of Chernobyl. If you go there now, you see so much nature, but that doesn't mean all the nature can survive radioactivity. There are those plants that can grow well and those who die. Only selected species can propagate. One bird species could nest on a power plant at Chernobyl, but most showed physical abnormalities. That's what selective propagation does to living beings. So, most species except for humans have died out. That's what this menu suggests. Then, how hazardous is radioactivity? I think it's number 66. Excuse me again. It says in here, life is not guaranteed. And this one here, it says sunlight. It's warning that there will be sunlight and it'll be dangerous. Isn't that strange? How can sunlight be dangerous? What this means is that the ozone layer has been completely destroyed. And because of that, even sunlight can be hazardous. It can cause skin cancer as ultraviolet rays directly hit the skin. That's how bad things are. No barbed wire is necessary in the outside world since the atmosphere is entirely filled with radioactivity. The ozone layer is destroyed, so just by going outside and exposing yourself to the sunlight, you can get skin cancer. It's a hopeless situation. Next, look at... This one. When I found this, I was astonished. They're still underground. But when the truck comes out of the building, this is what's on the road. The radiation warning symbol. What this means is that the city underground isn't safe either. Only the innermost part of the building is safe. Just by being outside of buildings in that underground city, you're exposed to radiation. Humans have escaped into the dome, but that didn't secure their lives. Radioactivity has started to leak into the dome as well. So, habitable areas for humans are rapidly decreasing. Here's the evidence. Hmm, where was it? My bad. It's number 63, so... Here, take a look. In the scene, the truck flies in the air. These roads here, unlike the road that the truck has taken off from, these roads have been abandoned. The cars are left on the roads, and the roads are covered by something that looks like moss. 
They are no longer in use. This scene mainly shows how the truck could fly in the air. But if you look at the highways in the background, if you look carefully, you find abandoned cars lined up endlessly. And they're covered by moss. This is the proof that this city is not safe. Death is drawing near the entire dome city. And... Wait, let's go back. This image here, this residential building, the truck ascends and crashes into the building. This is one of the highest parts of the dome, and you see all the windows broken. At a glance, they look like trees, but they seem more like moss. It means that the higher the floor, the more broken windows you see and radioactivity leaks in through these windows, but people still live there. The higher you go, the closer you get to the ground, which is more dangerous. So the rich hide inside the buildings deeper underground, and the poor and unemployed have to live closer to the ground level, where the windows are all broken and nothing can stop the radioactivity leaking inside. But those people have to survive as well, raise their children, and do whatever they can to extend their short lifespan. So these details of the ghetto area where the truck crashes into and abandoned roads show how people live inside the dome under the threat of radioactivity. This is an incredible anime made by Miyazaki. I think On Your Mark has condensed all the important elements of Naushka. Naushka uses a metaphor of the toxic jungle, which produces spores. People can no longer live in that area, so the Tomekians and Pejitians escape the spores and shelter themselves. However, the people of the Valley of the Wind decide to live with the toxic jungle. Naushka is a great metaphor of nuclear energy, but as soon as he finished the manga version of Naushka, he was strongly motivated to express like, boom, this is what Naushka was really about. That's really amazing. Okay, now... Uh, number 67. Oh, yeah. Here. I showed you the strange buildings in the back earlier. The image source of these strange buildings, as you might have guessed already, are the cooling towers of a nuclear power plant in Three Mile Island, where one of the worst nuclear power plant accidents occurred. These towers are used to release the heat into the atmosphere. Now, these are American designs. You see two types of reactors in the anime, American and Soviet. Now, back to this image. They just came from the underground city. That's where the towers are. The Soviet reactor exploded and people could no longer live on the earth. Then, what about the city they came from? Their city is also contaminated by radioactivity. Now they're receiving energy from American nuclear power plants. After surviving the accident, they still have to depend on nuclear power. These towers insinuate that fact. It's so hopeless. I'm almost done. Now, oh, here it is. This one. Right before the girl flies up to the dark sky, if you look at the background carefully, you see two more sarcophaguses. Beyond the two sarcophaguses, you see Shinjuku that has turned into a ruin. 
That izakaya or Japanese bar where Chage and Asuka are drinking at? The storyboard says it's located in Koenji. The story is about Japan. It's about how all the nuclear reactors in Tokyo exploded. People could no longer live on the ground, so they went underground. So when you go outside, you can see Shinjuku in the distance and numerous power plants that have caused the accidents. This is incredible. I think if he had to, Miyazaki would have drawn the concert hall where Chage and Asuka played this movie. But he didn't go that far. Okay, give me five more minutes and I'll be done talking about the protagonists, Chage and Asuka. So, why would Chage and Asuka free a girl into such a dangerous world? The world outside is entirely filled with radioactivity, so why let her go? There's a reason. So... The secret lies in this picture. As you can see, she's being encased. These people are dressed in protecting clothing while they encase her. It means she's a radioactive creature. She's like Godzilla. Then an airplane takes her away. And that airplane is specially made. The plane has a radiation symbol painted on the body. It shows how the girl is contaminated by radioactivity. Not only that, she can spread it just by living. Just by being there, she may unintentionally spread radioactivity that can harm others, just like how Godzilla does. So the ending scene, um, number 86, it's here. The last lyrics. Soshite bokura wa doesn't say what will happen to them. What happens to them at the end? Well, they die, of course. They went out into the world filled with radioactivity that can kill you instantly. This girl can live there. Or more like, without radioactivity, she can't live. But Chage and Asuka are regular humans, not to mention that they are driving a convertible. Their only fate is to die. That's why they deviate from the road. And the camera zooms out and captures the car making a complete stop, which suggests how their lives end there. If they were alive, any creator would definitely choose an ending where Chage and Asuka drive the car thoroughly till the end, just like the girl. It's necessary to avoid misinterpretation. The two would successfully escape and perhaps end up in another town while the girl vanishes into the sky. That's how a happy ending would be like. But in this anime, the car goes off the road and stops in a strange way. It probably means that their lungs bled and they died instantly. So... The girl went beyond the clouds while the two men and the remaining humans will die under the clouds. Now, why are the police chasing Chage and Asuka? They are chased by numerous police planes when they rescue the girl. The police chase them because they want the girl back. There's no point in catching Chage and Asuka. The authority wants the girl because they want to know the secret to her life. Why she can live with strong radioactivity. They'd dissect her to find out the truth if they had to. Some may think, oh, she has wings, so she's just an angel. But that can't be. I'll explain why I don't think she's an angel next. It just can't be. 
On Your Mark is actually the prequel to the manga version of Naushka. The two works are connected through the theme of artificial life. In the world of Naushka, history has been transmitted orally after seven days of fire, burned all the historical documents and official records. So, what happened before in that world was this. In the real history of Naushka, the story of a girl with wings escaping the evil got transmitted through generations. It got warped and warped and warped until it became that legend of the Valley of the Wind. Everything makes sense if you think like that. The toxic jungle and the giant warriors are all metaphors for Miyazaki. Now that he was done with the manga Nashka, he expressed the true story as an anime. The girl symbolizes hope. Which you see in this tapestry. People die one after another inside the dome city. But there's hope outside. Tomekia and Pijite are metaphors for this dome city that comes out in On Your Mark. Now, I'm done with Miyazaki's second malicious intention, nuclear energy. So I've explained violence and nuclear energy. Now, on to the third malicious intention, the girl with wings. We're still on the free part, so please bear with me. I had to spend time on this part before moving on to the next layer, which will flip the previous conclusion on its head.